Praise the Lord. We welcome you all to our live broadcast this Sunday, August 29, 2021. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, thank you for today. Thank you for your children all over the world. Thank you for all who continue to uphold the gospel, who continue to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. We thank you because it's your blessing to your church to have faithful witnesses all over the world. Father, we are praying that through all these with faithful witnesses, Lord, when they speak your word, Lord, let it go with power. Let your power flow to reach others, to break the yokes in the lives of people and set the captives free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Amen. we give you the praise and honor. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Speak through us and reach your people and bless them as they listen and watch in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our instrumental taken from Abraham Brassi again. May the Lord continue to bless him and his family. The Clash of the Kingdom series. That's where we're continuing. Today we are on item four. Why it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. Why is it difficult? We're going to explore this topic today. So that topic. My kingdom is not of this world, is the outline. First, second will be why it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. So let's start with the first one. My kingdom is not of this world, said the Lord. I'm going to use two incidents during the lost earthly ministry to highlight that the kingdoms of the world or the world and the kingdom of God or heaven are diametrically opposed to each other. They have nothing in common. Their values are as different as light is to darkness. So let us look at the first one. The Lord's prayer to the Father for his followers in John chapter 17. Shall we read, please? John chapter 17, verses 14 to 18. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. Praise the Lord. The Lord said, if you're really a child of God, you don't belong to the world. You don't belong to the worldly kingdoms. You are just a pilgrim. You are an ambassador from heaven. Always have that at the back of your mind as we explore this topic today. In the second incident was when the Lord confronted the Roman power, which was actually the world power of his day. He confronted Pilate, who was the ruler of Judea, but working for the emperor in Rome. Let's read the scripture, please. John chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. Jesus replied, Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. 
but my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king? Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. Praise the Lord. In verse 36, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. But my kingdom is not of this world, the Lord declares so several times in the scriptures. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. But what most of us have done today is to conflict, to put the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth as the same. That's the origin of the prosperity messages you hear in your churches. Which is why it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. Next topic. Why so many are headed to Christless eternity and simply make a U-turn? And why this ministry is here to alert? We're all walking for the same. That's we're all struggling to enter. Nobody has entered yet. But there are some things we must know. That it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. Many are invited, but very few are chosen. So said the Lord, I didn't say so. Next scripture, please. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Praise the Lord. Seriously, do you think the Lord was addressing the world? No. He was addressing the believers. He was addressing his disciples. He was addressing you and I who have been called, who have been invited. He's telling you and I that the only way we will ever inherit eternal life is if we seek and find a narrow gate. Because the world with this highway is waiting to snatch. His gate is so wide. So the question would be why? We, and everybody is going towards there. The billions who say that Christians are running to that gate. Because it's difficult the other way around. The opposite way is very difficult. The Lord said the gateway to life is very narrow. And it's difficult. And only a few. Look at that. So of the 1.3 something billion who are believers or who say that Christians today, the Lord is saying only very few among them will ever find it. Please, this is a warning to me, to everybody who hears this message. The road is narrow. He's not talking of unbelievers. He's talking to those who are believed. Only unbelievers read the Bible anyway. Only, I mean, only believers read the Bible. Unbelievers are reading to find something why they won't believe. But believers say they have believed. He's addressing you. You cannot go into the kingdom of God by the broad way, but through the what? Difficult path. You see, the kingdoms of the world admit everybody. They are always welcoming. They have so many things to entice. So many nice things to entice the flesh. That's why your prosperity pastors have millions following them. They give you messages that make you feel good. But you are on the highway to hell. If you have hear this message today and you fail to broadcast it to others, whatever happens to them is yours. It's your, not mine. Because the road to destruction is very visible. It is in the very big cathedrals, in the very big announcements they make every, every day. It is in your televisions inviting you, telling you how much millions you stand to make if you just but come and Pay this money or give, do this seed offering. That is what I'm talking about. It's coming out from those jet owning pastors announcing how they made money. When is money they collected from you? How God has blessed them. Not knowing that they have conned you into giving them that. And you are responsible for their sin because you have contributed to it. The path to the kingdom of God is very hard to find. He has invited us, yes, but. It's very hard to find. You have to look for it. 
you must search vigorously because it has demands that appear to be very hard on the surface. But in reality, those demands are not very hard. If you focus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, if you allow him to carry you, then you'll be there. But if you want to do it on your own strength, you are never going to find it and you're never going to make it. Let's clip up, please. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Praise the Lord. These are all from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who again is he telling? His followers. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's telling you and I that money and wealth beckons on the highway to hell. It is so attractive because it can buy you all the good things of life. That's why worldly prosperity preachers and teachers tapped into it. They are not doing the bidding of the kingdom of God. They are doing the bidding of the kingdom of darkness, whether they are aware of it or not. I want you to repeat that to yourself and to your pastor who preaches prosperity every second. No one can serve two masters. Either you serve money or you serve God. So every time when it is offering time, blessing time, Every time when they pass it for one building project or the other. Every time when there is always money, 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 money in the service. They are not promoting the kingdom of heaven. They are promoting the kingdom of darkness. Whether they know it or not is not important. The point is you hearing my voice. That is the truth. And those who love such messages. That goes to you now hearing me because I love you. Or you defend it. You are rebellious. And you're enemies of the gospel of Christ. And you stand in danger of losing your souls. I'm no better than anybody. But I'm a peace to deliver a message to the truth and nations. And I will not relent. Praise the Lord. Next scripture, please. Mark chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Then Peter began to speak up. We've given up everything to follow you, he said. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. Praise the Lord. When they quote this scripture to you, verse 30, they tell you about a hundredfold return. But they don't talk about along with persecution. And the brothers and sisters is talking about. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. I've not seen many of you. I don't know who you are. But you're my brother, you're my sister. You are interceding for me, I'm interceding for you. So I have more brothers and sisters than I ever had in my eighthly with uh, in my in my father's house. If I come to you and you are brother or sister, I'm sure you can receive me and my wife in your house and entertain us because we're children of God. But that's not why I brought this scripture. I'm going to look at Mark 10, 24. 
I'm picking verse 24 from it. And I'm going to read out the verses for you. Display it at the bottom, please. Yes. In Mark chapter 10, 24, the New International Version said, the disciples were amazed at his words. Then Jesus said, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. But the New King James Version, and also a King James Version says, And the disciples